Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Saima Amin from Jamia Hamdar. Today we are going to talk on the module Modification and Application of Neosomes from Paper Novel Drug Delivery Systems 2. I will be completing the following objectives. The first one is the different modifications done in a neosome structure with which we are having the modified neosomes available such as proneosomes, pegylated neosomes, asperosomes, bilosomes, ethosomes and descosomes. My second objective will be to consider the toxicity of a neosome formulation. The third point which will be discussed in the presentation will be a comparison of a conventional neosome with liposomes. The fourth objective of the presentation is putting emphasis on the advantages of a neosome structure. Lastly, I will be discussing the various pharmaceutical applications of a neosome formulation. Coming to the modifications done in the neosome, the first one is a proneosome, which is by name indicating it's a dry kind of a neosome formed with water soluble carriers like sorbitol, mannitol and on this carrier we are putting a coat of a surfactant. So when this structure is hydrated with the presence of water, a neosomal dispersion is obtained. These neosomes which are termed as now proneosomes are advantageous because they are more physically stable and assure more existence in the systemic circulation because of their stability. They are able to cross the biological membrane, specifically the skin tissue to a deeper extent. As neosomes are also less toxic, these proneosomes are also not showing any toxicity. Like neosomes, in proneosomes also, we are incorporating components like cholesterol, lecithin, to prevent the drug leakage so that the structure is more stable and capable of permeating the membrane. In the literature, we have seen various drugs incorporated as proneosome formulation. For example, the tenoxicam, which has been prepared using tween 20 as a surfactant along with cholesterol present in a ratio 9 is to 1. The Tenoxicam uh, proneosome was found to be very stable and assuring a good release over a period of time. Considering the second example of a proneosome, where we have formulated proneosome of benzocaine using surfactants like span 60, span 80 or span 85 and the resultant mixture was a proneosome capable of assuring higher stability and the percentage of the drug that was retained in that vesicular structure was also quite high as evident in the literature. The another example where we have formulated a proneosome which showed a controlled release for an anti-diabetic moiety, uh, glyclazide. The drug was protected from the degradation that happens in the stomach and in large intestine. So, in that case also, proneosome was found to be very fruitful. The modification carried out for neosomes include formation of neosome vesicles with high concentration of ethanol. These vesicles are called as ethosomes or the deformable neosomes. Like neosomes, they consist of non-ionic surfactants but a higher concentration of ethanol or isopropyl alcohol along with water is present in the structure. Toshio et al. were the first to prepare ethosomes for the drug, the lipid vesicular system had 
higher ethanol these ethosomes are known to permeate through the stratum corneum and possesses high transdermal flux for the incorporated drug than the liposomes or neosomes the synergistic effect for high transdermal flux is attributed to non ionic surfactant and the higher concentration of ethanol used in the formulation such structures show greater penetration across the skin lipid bilayers yet another type of neosome included in the modification is discosomes these are named because of their discoid structure these discosomes are prepared from hexadecyl diglycerol ether cholesterol and diacetyl phosphate by mechanical shaking followed by sonication and then incubation with soluble polyoxyethylene cholesterol ether that is solulen c24 at 74 degree centigrade four types of phases are observed the first one is the lamellar phase the second one is the micellar phase third one is the uncharacterized phase while a novel phase is observed which is called as disome phase these disomes which are formed as the fourth phase are the vesicles with larger mean diameter ranging from 12 to 60 mm these vesicles slowly increase in their dimension immediately after sonication disomes are known to entrap water soluble solutes and are known to give higher absorption then the drug solution the another modification done in the neosomal structure is the pegylation technique pegylated neosome are the neosomes where we have incorporated a layer of polyethylene glycol on the structure so that this hydrophilic layer imparts higher circulatory effect for the prepared neosomes it has been observed that pegylated neosomes circulate for a longer time in the circulation and high hydrophilicity because of polyethylene glycol causes neosomes to have a layer of water around the spherical structure so this layer which is of water around the spherical structure prevents the uptake of this pegylated neosomes by the rest uh, enriched tissues like liver in a way endocytosis of the uh, molecule is prevented this feature imparts higher circulation to the prepared structure and this is required specifically when we are looking for targeting of the neosomes to tissues like liver or uh, spleen or the stomach lining asposomes are another type of neosomes which are the aqueous vesicles formed from mixture of ascorbyl palmitate like neosomes they also consist of cholesterol and charge inducer like diacetyl phosphate asposomes are the vesicles which are first hydrated with water and then sonicated to obtain neosomes 
Asposomes are specially used to improve the transdermal permeation of drug. They have also been used to reduce disorders caused by reactive oxygen species due to their intrinsic antioxidant property. Yet another modification of neosome is bilosomes. These Medical structures are almost similar to the neosomes except that we are incorporating apart from the surface active agent the bile salt like sodium deoxycholate. These bile salts are giving stability to the structure and most of the times bilosomes have been experimented for the moieties which are degraded by the stomach pH especially the vaccines which are to be delivered through oral route. So in a way these bilosomes or the bile salt containing neosomes are more stable, require no specific conditions for formation or production and are completely stable in the gastrointestinal tract. The toxicity of neosomes. As we know, neosomes are the vesicles consisting of non-ionic surfactants. Therefore, it is imperative to study their toxicity. We have the guidelines available to study the toxicity of neosomes. For toxicity evaluation, OECD guidelines or Schedule Y of Drugs in Cosmetic Rules 1945 is considered. As per the schedule, the toxicity for the formulation as a single dose or multiple dose is carried out at least on two animal species where one should be non-rodent like dog, guinea pig, etc. The toxicity study is carried out for 14 to 28 days. And the test formulation is evaluated at low, medium and high dose. The high dose is usually the maximum tolerable dose. During this study, important parameters for the model, for example, body weight, food consumption habit and mortality, are observed. At terminal point of the study, biochemical investigations, histopathological examination of intended tissue and hematological evaluation are carried out. The toxicity of neosome should always be considered with respect to its route of administration. For example, Blood compatibility studies are assessed for intravenously administered neosomes. For topically administered neosome formulation, the histopathological examination of the tissue is required. Usually, surfactants used in the neosomes are ester type, which are biodegradable therefore these are expected to show less toxicity the ester types of surfactants by nature are less toxic than ether type because the enzymatic degradation of the ester bonds is possible in the system it is observed that increase in alkyl chain length of surfactant causes a reduction in toxicity while increase in polyoxyethylene chain length enhances celiotoxicity that is the toxicity observed for the respiratory tissue. Another class of surfactant explored 
for making of neosome is a bolar neosome. Basically, these bolar neosomes are the amphiphilic kind of surfactants consisting of polymethylene carbon chain along with two polar groups present at the terminals. So, the structure consists of two polar groups with a hydrocarbon chain and these are called as bolar neosomes. Bolar neosomes are having the polar groups which are specifically made of electrolytes. So, the surfactant moiety now is consisting of the electrolytes present at the terminal end along with the polymethylene chain. Uh, these bolar neosomes have showed better safety and tolerability on human keratinocyte cells and when they were incubated for 72 hours, higher drug uptake was shown. The study carried out, carried out on human volunteers also showed no skin erythema with application of a drug made with bola neosome surfactant with liposomes. Neosomes are the structures with single chain surfactant and cholesterol. But Liposomes contain phospholipids which are oxidized easily. The concentration of cholesterol used in neosome is low but in liposomes the concentration of cholesterol is higher. Entrapment efficiency for the drug is low in case of neosomes. But liposomes also are able to show less entrapment efficiency. Neosomes are inexpensive than liposomes. The technology used for production of liposomes is expensive. For, but for neosomes, sophisticated technology is not required. Neosomes are stable because of the components used such as cholesterol and surfactants but liposomes are unstable due to phospholipids. For neosomes no special storage and handling is required but for liposomes special storage and handling is required. In neosomes, the issue of purity of component is not a problem but in liposomes, purity of component is variable especially for the natural phospholipids. After studying the details of a neosome structure, the components and the encapsulation offered for variety of drugs, we can conclude the advantages for neosomes such as neosomes are economically cheap compared to other vesicles used in drug delivery. They can entrap both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs. The hydrophilic drug occupies the polar region while the lipophilic drug is present in the bilayer structure. They are more stable than liposomes because phospholipid present in liposomes get easily oxidized. Neosomes are osmotically active and stable that is why are used in ophthalmic drug delivery also. They are biodegradable, biocompatible, non-immunogenic and improve the oral bioavailability for mostly the poorly absorbed drugs. They can enhance the skin penetration of drugs. The vesicles act as a depot and releasing the drug content in a controlled manner.
Recently, these neosomes have been explored for drug targeting to specific tissues and they can mod modulate the ADME of the drug. Neosomes are widely used in drug delivery. These are able to deliver the drug through oral route, transdermal route, topical route or through intravenous administration. Coming to the first route that is the oral route of drug delivery through neosomes include the examples of drug such as insulin, acyclovir, fluconazole, greasofulvin, etc. In case of insulin, the low epithelial permeability and the proteolytic enzymes degradation for the moiety make the drug delivery difficult. Therefore, delivery of recombinant human insulin using neosomal formulation has offered benefits. The entrapment of insulin in bilayer structure of neosomes protected the drug against proteolytic enzymes such as alpha, chymotrypsin, trypsin and pe pepsin present in the system. A neosomal formulation of acyclovir showed two-fold increase in oral bioavailability compared to a tablet dosage form. Neosome of fluconazole formulated with span 60 showed sustained release for the drug by zero order followed by first order kinetics. Greasiofulvin loaded neosomes have been subjected to an in vitro in vivo correlation study where Improved bioavailability and sustained effect was observed after oral administration. Gencyclovir, a lipophilic drug, showed encapsulation in the neosome vesicle formed using SPEN40, SPEN60 and cholesterol. The formulation showed higher drug release that is nearly 85% with zero, zero order release kinetics. Yet another example of drug rifampicin and getifloxacin loaded in the neosomes showed higher efficacy for tuberculi bacilli because of prolonged action. Neosomes have been experimented for ocular drug delivery, especially for antimicrobials for better patient compliance. These vesicles have provided prolonged duration of action at the corneal surface by preventing ocular metabolism by enzymes present in the lacrimal fluid. The drugs which have shown greater bioavailability through ocular route are gentamicin, brimolinidine, ufloxacin and acyclovir. The neltroxin multilamellar vesicles prepared to treat diabetic keratopathy showed higher drug entrapment and small size which was responsible for better efficacy through vesicles. Neosomes have been formulated for controlled drug delivery as in case of gentamicin reported by 
Abdulberry et al. Neosomes are used for topical drug delivery. These are used to deliver drugs which exhibit higher oxidation, have low aquasolubility with a short biological half-life and rapid liver metabolism like resveratrol. Resveratrol is a drug with poor bioavailability due to rapid metabolism and poor aquasolubility. It has been prepared as neosome. Neosomes for the drug has shown inhibition of irreversible change of resveratrol from the active trans isomer to inactive cis isomer. Dithrenol, which is a widely used medicine for psoriasis, has also been experimented for topical drug delivery through neosomes. The neosomal formulation showed better effect than topical cream. Neosomes of N-acetyl glucosamine prepared by the researcher showed improved drug localization in the skin as required in hyperpigmentation disorders. Drugs like enoxacin, tretinoin, terbinafin, ibuprofen, meloxicam, lopinavir and erythromycin are formulated as neosomes. The neosomes offer better skin permeation due to fluidity as well as the lipid content responsible for greater penetration. It is observed that increasing the total lipid or drug concentration in the neosome enhances the entrapment efficiency as is seen in case of flurbiprofen neosomes. Entrapping benzyl peroxide into, into neosomes demonstrated pro prolonged release of drug, increased drug retention into the skin and an improved permeation across the skin after encapsulation. Celidrocyte, because of its skin protective effects, which include its ability to inhibit melanin synthesis via inhibition of tyrosine, tyrosinase expression, showed higher drug uptake in human epidermal immortal keratinocytes and human embryonic skin fibroblast. This is an example indicating higher penetration for the drug across skin. Neosomes have been developed for intravenous administration because of their submicron dimension. Neosomes up to size of 10 micron meter are administered via intraperitoneal or intramuscular route. Drugs like doxorubicin, methotrexate, diclofenac sodium, vincristine, 5-fluorouracil, zidovidin, and cisplatin have been delivered through intravenous route. Neosomes have been designed for different diseases such as sodium stilbogluconate as neosome is designed for leishmaniasis. However, 
cisplatin and paclitaxel as nosomal drug delivery are available for treating neoplasia various peptides such as bovine serum albumin over albumin and insulin are developed for nosomal drug delivery estradiol as nosome has been reported by sahel et al for treating hormone imbalances recently nosomes have found the way in treating and diagnosing the diseases as evident in the example where ibotridol which is a diagnostic marker was delivered for diagnosis of the tissue mostly nosomes were developed for cosmetic purpose as concealer or as lip gloss by la oreal since 1975 various brands are available in market for nosomes by different companies so students let us conclude this module the nosomes hold potential to deliver therapeutic moieties either by oral route topical route or transdermal route or ocular route or through a systemic route modifications done in nosomes offer several benefits such as ease of formation stability in the blood and protection from gastric myelo they are known to be the better drug carrier than liposomes and are free from any toxicity in spite of the surfactants used